Welcome back everyone. If you're new to the channel, this is a Tuesday technical. I try and put these out once a week. They're a bit shorter, but they're a bit more information dense. I try and cover a specific topic to do with cattle or sheep medicine in a little bit of detail, just to get you thinking about it and hopefully start some conversations with your vet if you think you need to. As ever, if you haven't already, please consider pressing subscribe, hitting the little bell, and at the end of the video, if you do like it, to click like and to leave me a comment. Again, any feedback is all very useful. We are back to cattle this week after a few sheep technicals, and we're gonna be covering a specific infection that is Campylobacter or venereal Campylobacteriosis to be specific. So Campylobacter is a family of bacteria you may well have heard of before, famously causes food poisoning in humans. One Campylobacter species is also one of the most common infectious causes of abortion in sheep. Now Campylobacter fetus venerealis is what causes issues in cattle. Campylobacter infection in cattle, also known as vibriosis in some countries, is a venereal or sexually transmitted disease of cattle. Clinically, it manifests itself as poor fertility. And that's because at a cow level, it will cause uterine infection, it will cause failure to conceive in the first place, and also early or late term abortions. Typically in suckler herds, this is picked up at PDing, pregnancy diagnosis, there will be a very high barren rate. You can have up to 25% or even more of the cows empty. That really is a disaster. Bulls, just like cows, apart from the reproductive issues, rarely show any outward signs of infection. Diagnosis can be a bit tricky. Your vet will probably want to take some samples from either the bull's sheath or the vagina of the cows, or possibly both. It depends where you are, depends which labs you're near and what the labs want. So how does Campylobacter get on to a farm? Well, it's spread venereally, that means sexually, so it must come in an infected animal. Most commonly, this is going to be in a non-virgin bull, a bull that's been used. Certainly borrowed, hired bulls are really high risk. Non-virgin heifers, so heifers with calves at foot, could also pose a risk and bulls or heifers that cross boundary fences between neighbors where status might be unknown are also a cause of introduction to a herd. Once Campylobacter gets into a herd, it will be the bulls that spread it as they're mating multiple cows. And if bulls are rotated halfway or towards the end of the breeding season between bulling groups, that will make the problem even worse. So say the worst happens and your vet has concluded that there is Campylobacter in the herd, what are your options? Now, if you end up in that position, this isn't a video to point you in the direction of specific options. This is just to show you what some of the options might look like. It's between you and your vet to work out exactly what to do. The textbook option for Campylobacter is to cull all the stock balls and only use AI for at least two years. Now it's simple on paper and it can be done. It is pretty labor intensive and relatively expensive. If you're organic, of course, then you're not going to be able to do synchronized AI. That's going to make it even more labor intensive. So it can be done, but it's a lot of work and relatively expensive. In addition, in many countries, vaccination is an option. In the UK, there isn't a licensed Campylobacter vaccine for cattle. It is possible to get an autogenous Campylobacter vaccine made, or if appropriate, your vet may be able to import a Campylobacter vaccine for use from a country where it is licensed. Washing the sheaths of bulls pre-breeding season is also likely to be beneficial. That will reduce the infectious load of Campylobacter in their sheaths, on their penises, it means they are then less likely to pass it on to cows or heifers. If, and only if, your records are absolutely meticulous, there may be an option to manage Campylobacter within a herd through segregation of animals you know to be affected versus the ones you know to be unaffected and culling accordingly. That's not a common approach. I only mention it because I found an example of it in the literature while doing the research for this video. And I will stick that 
in the video description. It's from a veterinary journal, so it might be a bit jargon heavy, probably more appropriate for vets. But as I say, what's key and they make clear in that article is that you need really, really good records. If you're thinking all this treatment and control within an infected herd sounds like hard work, you are absolutely spot on. It is very hard work over an extended period of time. So Campylobacter is an excellent example of the prevention is better than cure rule. You want to prevent this from entering your herd. So how do you do that more importantly? Straightforwardly, it means keeping infected animals out. Remember, good fences make good neighbors. If that's a possible risk of incursion, don't buy non-virgin animals. Don't buy bulls that have been used. Don't buy heifers with calves at foot. Keep it really simple. If that's absolutely your only option, for example, small herds commonly borrow bulls, you can get your vet to treat them with antibiotics while they're in quarantine. That will reduce but not eliminate the risk of Campylobacter entering your herd. In fact, you've seen me do just that in a previous video. Maybe I'll get it up here on the screen now. I know best practice isn't always possible, but there are things you can do to mitigate the risk. For those small herds who feel they need to borrow bulls, I really think there's a lot of scope for synchronized AI to fill that gap. And conveniently, it also reduces the disease risk. To conclude, Campylobacter in cattle, it can cause really serious reproductive losses. Treatment and control can be done. It's very labor intensive. And so the focus should always be on prevention. And that is done by keeping non-virgin animals out of the herd. Now that's it for this one. Remember, if you enjoyed that and you haven't already subscribed, subscribe now, hit the little bell, like the video and leave me a comment. You could even share the video with people you think might like it. Thanks again, over and out.